Mark's Classic Rock, Q1043. Welcome back. Jonathan Clark in the studio with Josh, Sam, Danny, and Jake. The band is Greta Van Fleet. How you guys doing, man? Spectacular. How about yourself? Uh, pretty good. You're you're in the big city of NYC. Now, you've been here before, right? A couple times. Yeah, a couple of times. Yeah. What was the first thing you wanted to do when you first arrived in Leave. the, uh, the big apple? <laughs> I wanted Sleep? to start uh, cleaning up the streets a little bit. Get a mop Sam wants to clean like up the It's not that dirty. Come on. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, no, I wanted to see uh, the Rock Rockefeller Center. Was the first right, thing I wanted yeah. to do. Yeah. yeah, that was pretty cool. Now I you still go see haven't the, been able to do it. Now you gotta go see the Christmas tree. Yeah, Ice no, that too. That Maybe do a little thing. skating. Oh, you know, do that. Is that up yeah. already? Yeah, yep. the skating rink really? is up. The Christmas tree right. is up. It's supposed I know to be what like doing tonight. <laughs> they had the big uh, celebration last week. Anyway, the new double EP. It's called From the Fires. The band is Greta Van Fleet. And uh, they are playing tomorrow night and Wednesday night this week at the Bowery Ballroom here in New York City. Evidently, these shows are sold out. Yeah, you can still yeah. sneak in, though, if you, you got, <laughs> if, if you like, you know somebody, you, like, you can get <laughs> yeah. in there, like, uh, hook it up. Uh, all the tour dates, GretaVanFleet.com. So you guys are from the teeming metropolis known as Frankenmuth, uh, Michigan, right? It's a yeah. huge, it is a huge metropolis. <laughs> Uh, yeah, as far as Christmas goes. Yeah, well, it's a yeah, Christmas I, empire. I yeah. want to get to that because in your bio, I thought it was I start I was laughing out loud. Known for the <laughs> world's largest Christmas store, <laughs> scenic farmland, picturesque wine and chocolate boat cruises. <laughs> yeah, I've never favorite. seen it. Crispy Wait, like chicken. A, a wine, a wine. A river I spend of wine every and weekend on a boat eating chocolate and drinking wine when I'm there. You know, crispy chicken dinners. Uh, not, this sounds like uh, a town in Europe. It doesn't yeah, sound like it's, America. It's, 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 it's a Bavaria. It, it's, it's known as Little Bavaria, right? Yeah, it's right. Little Bavaria. All right. the all the architectures based off of like the old Bavarian themes. You know, the cross bracing and stuff. Right. You can't, you can't have a. Business or so does Santa Claus live there or something? I mean, yes, yes. Cool. he does. Yeah. He does. Yeah. So you hang. Uh, your parents played a lot of vinyl. Uh, I hear. I read that you were growing up in, in the house, and I think your father, uh, Josh, Jake, and Sam, was in a band, or maybe still is. He yeah, wasn't he in a band few. until we we got a band. Come on, and really? Then he, he's jealous. And then he and then he had now he has two bands, so he's I think pretty much going you know putting it in your face. Yeah. You know, I got two bands. You know, <laughs> and something what is, like that. What does Dad yeah. play? Guitar? <laughs> like what? Harmonica. He, harmonica. He he's a blues man. He can yeah. sing too. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. harmonica. Harmonica and vocals. Best harmonica player I've ever heard. Really? Yeah, well, John Popper might disagree with you on that. <laughs> Better than John on Blues Travel. Uh, now, at first, I thought the band name. First of all, let me say you guys are brothers. We have uh, uh, Josh, Jake, and Sam are brothers. Mm -hmm. Who are the twins? The Jake and I. Jake. We like to keep them separated. Okay. Right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like, like, each other's too close. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they did. If we ever had a class together, we'd be on opposite ends of the room, and then and then that didn't work because then there was just this, you know, uh, everything uh, in between. Uh, yeah. Was just it, turmoil. It, all the whole classroom. <laughs> yeah. So then it was like, all right, well, we'll just get them in separate classes. It's always a weird thing. Like, did you have to wear different clothes so people could, you know, sort of. Well, sometimes they would wear the same clothes, and then they would switch classes. Oh, did, you know, like the classic. Yeah. Like, we did do that. We did do that. You're we just got playing with the those, system. Like, parent yeah. swap yeah. kind of thing. Uh, so Danny is the odd man out here, I guess, yeah. right? He's not that think, weird. A lot of people think he's man. very strange, but I don't think he's that weird. Who thinks I'm very strange? <laughs> <A lot of laughs> he also well, picks his nose quite it's, uh, <laughs> it's Greta Van Fleet. Uh, the double EP is from the fires. It sounds great on the radio. I've been playing this a lot. And at first, I thought the band name was kind of a hybrid between Van Halen and Fleetwood Mac, but I uh, clearly have that wrong because there is. It's Van I, Morrison and Fleet Foxes. Yeah. Right, Fleet Fox. <laughs> Good band, Fleet Foxes. Right. I like them. Great. Um, but who is Greta Van Fleet, or is this a mystical person of, you know? It's, bo it's both can, a real yeah. person and a and mystical, mystical being. Yeah. Really? No. Um, there's a, a woman in our town, Frankenmuth, and she's, I guess the name is Dutch, but she's, so she's, she's one of the town elders, pretty much, as, as we say. Still is. <clears throat> Still is, yeah. And so, we, the name, we never met her, you know, or knew who she was, but the name it had come across, it was like, well, that's really fascinating. That sounds like it could be a really cool band name, you know? So we took, it was Gretna Van Fleet, we took the N out, because it was going to happen inevitably. Right, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, that was it. It was kind of like stuck. And then we were playing a show downtown, and our, the name Greta Van Fleet was on the marquee, and everybody was calling her, saying, what are you doing at the, at the you know? That's at awesome. The hall. So she had to come down to see what was going on, you know? And this is the middle of, like, a festival or something. And she brought her husband, and they listened to the, and for people that are probably in their 80s, I mean, they sat through a, <clears throat> a whole set, <clears throat> 
a very very loud rock. Yes, you yeah. guys are not. Hall. This yeah. wooden hall was not made for rock and roll. This was no. meant for like a guy with his guitar, right? Or like an accordion band an accordion. up there. <laughs> yeah, and so and so it was just super loud. And at that time, a set was two or three hours. And bearing playing. in mind that she's like eighty, in her, you know, early eighties, that she sat through like a two-hour full rock and roll show and then came that, back. So that was pretty as well. That was God great. bless her. She gave us yeah. go ahead with the name. Yeah. She liked the whole thing. It was right. cool. And now there's like local news stations that'll go and get an interview with her <laughs> at her house or something. Now she's going to ask for merchandise <laughs> percentages. Yeah. So yeah. you better be careful, man. We had her we'll come up and it. sit in for drums for a song, too. No, that did not happen. <laughs> <laughs> now that I got to see video of. Yeah, she put on uh, her sunglasses and then made yeah. Danny look silly. She had a cigarette <laughs> in her mouth and she was like, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So the big English bands, Broken America, Cream, The Who, The Yardbirds, The Stones, The Beatles, lots been written about how they took the blues and and soul and R&B and sort of reinterpreted it in their own way, which made them like blow up in America. People were like, oh my God, what is this? And you guys have sort of reinterpreted the reinterpretation and channeled it into your own kind of thing, there's I great think. great truth to that. And um, there's a lot of respect we had growing up for, for for what we've listened to in our youth, which was like blues music and everything that they were, the, those Otis guys. Otis Redding, I read. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. All those, yeah. We were listening yeah, yeah. to all this stuff those guys were listening Before to. Before we were so, born, like Taj Mahal, Albert King. Yeah. Yeah. Bloody guy. But what you're saying is very true, because it, it does. It's just like an, uh, a respect for all of, all of where it came from. But it's still this evolution of it, you know? Yeah, right. I, I think that there is a certain amount, you know, done as far as that, you know, the evolution of those sounds and the blues and a lot of those rudimentary or traditional type, you know, genres like folk and, and blues and soul and stuff. And that was taken to a certain point and then stopped evolving, you know? I think yeah. you know, during, you know, the 70s or any of that period, some of it was continued to take and you know, be taken forward. But I think. What you know needs to be done is you know to reinvention of that you know right or and reinterpretation right. and sort of and channeling evolution. it into your own sound yeah yeah uh, it's Greta Van Fleet and the double EP that we're talking about is from the Fires and there are two interesting covers on this double EP uh, the great Sam Cooke a change is going to come now that's an ambitious song yeah to that cover. was the most intimidating well, I, of I don't the... know it's such a well written song that it would be hard to mess up you know yeah yeah. yeah. But we uh, kind of had always wanted to do a cover of it, even, you know, for, I mean, three, four years ago. It was something that Jake and I had, <clears throat> I remember sitting down and it came on the radio or something, and Jake and I, like, turned around and looked at each other and thought, man, that would be a fantastic song to, you know, try out. So it, th it was kind of when we were thinking about, how oh, well, how can we, you know, really tap into some of those obscure influences in, in this in this next yeah. four songs that are coming And out. a song that really, like, was instrumental in the uh, civil rights movement, actually, when yes. it came out in the early mm -hmm. 60s. So. Yeah, and the way I interpret it is it's just about oppression in general. I mean, it really could be. You know? Yeah. Um, and another song, Fairport Convention, Meet on the Ledge. Um, I, I want to know, Josh, when was the first time you realized you could hit these notes? Uh, uh, I mean, were you like three years old? And when he saw the giant goes... snake, he was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, <laughs> Yeah, Don't tread on me. <laughs> I mean, because you know what I thought of when I first heard your voice? I'm like, this guy needs to go in a room with some like sound technicians and scientists and like try and break a wine glass with his voice. You know what? That's actually it. a fantastic idea. <laughs> they, they used to be a commercial for like Memorex like cassettes or something. Yeah. They'd have like Ella Fitzgerald in there. Oh, yeah. Going crazy and like, I think, you know, is it live or is it Memorex to see if she could break the glass when she was singing. Yeah. But like, when did you realize you could sing like that? Uh, I, I, to be honest with you, it's kind of like something that evolved i'd always been singing but it's like when we put together this band or jake put together the band really it kind of <clears throat> started to take a, an ev a, a, evolve and i had to come up with something to in in the garage you've got only so much to work with these little uh monitors it's where it all like, starts well, how am i supposed to sing over that you know oh yeah absolutely. that sound that they were creating so that was part of it and then you know another because it was it would have to cut through and have to be really loud so i don't know it took a while honestly to get the whole hang of it i think at the beginning it probably didn't sound much more like anything other than the blues that real raspy yeah sound. yeah um, so Rolling Stone has put you on their list of 10 bands you need to know, which is awesome. And you guys have already received an award, uh, best new artist from La Loudwire. So congratulations on Thank that. You. That's Thank pretty you. awesome. Thank you. Um, 
So you guys are now what? The ripe old age of 21? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah we're getting up there in the years. going to die soon. Probably. Probably. Yeah. Oh, it's all over, man. It's all over. It's all over. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I never should have quit my band. I'm just thinking now. Uh, <laughs> so you, re you recorded this outside of Detroit with some of the guys uh, associated with Kid Rock or something? Or? Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, Al Sutton we got into the studio with initially. And uh, then Marlon had come in once the things had started to move, you know, and we had been, I think, what, uh, in and out of there for two straight years? Yeah. Right? yeah that's because we weren't really now. releasing anything, yeah. you know? When we stepped right. foot in that studio, we didn't know how to make an actual recording. You know, we knew what it entailed, but in those two or three years, we really learned a lot from Al and about how to record songs. Digital, you know, you can put analog, a, both? Uh, a little bit of both? Mostly digital. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Any fool man who has the patience and dedication to teach a bunch of young bucks to work in the studio. Young yeah, bucks, that's one some, way for it. Uh, you, you've some got some props. balls, man. <laughs> well, it's not just any, you know, young... Uh, you well, bucks. look, that's an education. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're that's talking an, like juvenile yeah. delinquents or something. It's an like, education. Oh. It's either college or the recording studio, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the parents are all on board, like, for this rock and roll career. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, They've been supportive the whole way. Yeah. You know, they were letting us in bars when we were... 13 years old. He speaks right. the truth. Really crappy bars. Yeah, our too. friends would go out to the movies and we'd be playing in bars, you know, and like... <laughs> <laughs> we'd be like puke, puke everywhere. Yeah, they'd puke nice. all nice. the walls. And, and yeah. They'd be, great songwriting they'd be material. Bu yeah, we even played some... Um, uh, biker gigs. We had <laughs> nice. we, we did I think three or four biker clubs in the yeah. middle of the woods. Yeah, it was Remember interesting. Smoke weed with Willie. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got the I'm guitars uh, and we got the vocals here. Obviously, you guys want to do a live song? Just yeah, let's give it a shot. What uh, if we said us? no? What if we said no? Well, okay. then we just <laughs> no, no. say see you later. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, tell us about the song and then uh, just go for it. And then move those mics down to the guitars, too, when you're ready. Oh, well, Black Smoke uh, was more of a contemporary, uh, one of the more contemporary songs that we've written We're about a year ago now. <clears throat> and um, so it's kind of, uh, kind of a song about history and lessons of history and archetypes and things like that. It's a broad song and... I don't know, and you know I kind of like, said, he said, I like interpret it yourself. I like to, yeah, I like to let people get the idea. Right, that's the know, great thing the... about songwriting; it can mean something completely different to exactly. another fan, which is yeah. which is what it should mean to them. Yeah. You know? All right, let's hear it. Bye. 
Greta Van Fleet playing live here on Q104 Threes Out of the Box. I have a funny feeling that when you guys do that live, the song might be a little longer. Extend the jam a little bit towards the end. Significantly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> love that. It's from the uh, new, P, new EP, double EP, From the Fires. All right, uh, camera guys, get ready. We're going to have some rapid-fire questions for the guys oh, in the My band. favorite. Oh, no. Okay? Woo. Oh, All right. God. All right. Get ready. Here's the first question. Josh. Yeah. Robert Plant or Mick Jagger? No philosophizing, no long discussion. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Got to pick one. Uh, Robert Plant. <laughs> okay. Jake, Gibson or Fender? Gibson. Mm. Okay. Tough one. Wow. Danny. Ludwig. Up. Hey. Ludwig or Slingerland? <laughs> oh, Sam, sh- Gibson or Fender? All right. Fender. <laughs> Fender, okay. All right, for everyone, Beatles or Stones? Beatles. Beatles. Stones. Wait, who said Stones? I did. Okay. The All guy right. who doesn't know what the Stones are. What are the Stones? The guy that doesn't know music. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. Next one. No, let's let's argue for a bit. Now. Next one. <laughs> Led Zeppelin or Black Sabbath? Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin. <laughs> did everyone say Zeppelin? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> Soundgarden or Alice in Chains? Soundgarden. Uh, Soundgarden. 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 Okay. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. <laughs> Pearl Jam or Nirvana? Nirvana. 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 Uh-huh. Uh, Ramones or The Clash? Uh, Ramones. Yeah. Uh, Can we go with uh, a different band? Sex Pistols? With Velvet Underground. I'll do Sex Pistols. Oh, Velvet Underground, I'd jump on board with. They're punk, right? Say so okay. The Clash. Really? Maybe. <laughs> Jonesy. Next one. Coke, Pepsi, or Red Bull? <laughs> it depends. It depends what time of pop. day it is. Jack if I'm Daniels. getting up, if I'm getting up from a, a nap, Neither I would prefer you. Pepsi. Neither. Okay. All right. Here's a tough that, one. That's terrible. Get ready. Yeah. Sex or drugs? Uh, oh. I would say rock and roll. Sex is less that's detrimental. That's a diplomatic answer. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I'm not really privy rock to that, and roll. In, uh, that information. Mm. I don't think Final one comes answer. without the other. You know. There's Honestly, a po- you have a point if there. You, if you're playing rock and roll and you just do one and not the other, then you, then you, the fates are not in your favor. This I mean, might be the, mo- the most important question. Leather or spandex? Leather. 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 That is a very spandex. important question. You're right. iPhone or Android? iPhone. iPhone. Mm. <laughs> Neither. Yes. But iPhone. Neither. Neither. <laughs> I don't even have my phone on. I don't, I don't think I even brought my phone. Track phone. <laughs> okay. The most important question. New York or L.A.? L.A. No, New York. New York. <clears throat> They're so different. You guys are in New York. <laughs> yeah, just say, just say New York. <laughs> New York! Come on, yeah. man. You got the accent down. It's Greta Van Fleet. They're playing tomorrow night and Wednesday night at the Bowery Ballroom here in New York City. And all the tour dates are at GretaVanFleet.com. Everyone go out and buy the double EP from the fires. It's awesome, and it sounds really good on the radio, guys. So, listen, best of luck, and uh, come back here anytime. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for having Thank us. You. New York's classic rock. Q1043.